Uh, anyway, and so, I mean, it, it, it's fantastic to, because I really love the blues, and I want to bring the blues back, and I'll introduce the blues to you youngsters who have no clue what the blues is. Right, and I, you know what I see? Uh, my guitar students, they kill me, these, these kids that are like, oh, maybe 12, 13 years old, and they're bringing in Hendrix songs to learn. And they're saying, hey, can you teach me how to play this? I think it's really great. And I'm like, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, of course I can. I'm so deli- <laughs> you know, delighted. I'm like, yeah, there's hope. There's hope. Um, <laughs> you know, th- there are some bands out there bringing it. Like I said, I'm not saying there aren't any new bands out there. There are. But unfortunately, you got to look for them again. You know, it's, ah. Well, plus, so, a, lot of, the- a lot of your, some of your more successful musicians are taking a step back from the more mainstream thing now that they are more successful and trying to kind of go backwards into more of, not yeah. necessarily become more underground, but, but get back to more of a roots like feel. Like, um, for example, Josh Holm from Queens of the Stone Age, right. um, very bluesy, bluesy in a lot of their tracks. He's, he's working, he just released an album with, with Iggy Pop who you wouldn't necessarily think is, you know, associated with but that see, kind of music that's the magic style. right there. That's mm-hmm. cool. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's excellent. Mm-hmm. It's got so many different genre kind of strings attached to it that mm-hmm. if you if you think about the stuff that Iggy's made previously and the stuff that Queens of the Stone Age has made previously and you just wonder, wow, there's a lot that went into this that these guys just pulled from, from all their previous experience. Mm-hmm. Well, let's face it. You're one of these great bands. Okay, fine. When you're driving a K car, you want that contract in the worst way. So now mm-hmm. you got the contract. How many Lamborghinis can you possibly drive at once? What's that I hear you say? Only one. That's right. You can have mm-hmm. ten in your garage, but that's kind of ridiculous. Mm-hmm. Now these are now these artists are saying, okay, what I did to get me here, it might not be serving my soul anymore. Mm-hmm. It's time that I go hunting for something I want to hunt for. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go after some soul food now. I, I did my time as a quote-unquote rock star. Now I want to get out there and and just play music. Mm-hmm. And I think that yeah, and and I think that's happening. I mean, Spider, it's a great point. You know, it's it's starting to it's starting to pop up more often, and that's really good because you got to do something that's meaningful. I mean, it's okay to get out there and have some fun, but you know. You, you gotta c- contribute a little something along the ways too. It just can't be all schlock, right? Well, plus, well, sp- speaking of speaking again of of Queen of the Stone Age, uh, at one of the uh, I believe it was one of the Grammys, uh, maybe a couple years back, they they played a joint show where they played a song and um, Nine Inch Nails played a song, and they were doing a lot of work together at the time, and they played a song together with Lindsey Buckingham from Fleetwood Mac. And now that's a badass combination. Oh, they mixed all of their different styles together into this one Nine Inch Nails panned track, and it was it was great. It was so awesome. It was. <laughs> there's no like recorded version of it floating around that isn't like a live version, but it's right. excellent. It's just and with all their styles on display, it just shows what you can do if you don't restrict yourself to the to this kind of mainstream. Well, this is what sells. They all just right. want to be like, hey, and they're doing it on this big stage at the Grammys, you know? And Well, you know, and that's, that's kind of like a little political in a sense, and it's a good thing because they're saying, hey, guys, let's raise the bar again. But I, I remember, you know, there was a time when the Grammys were the greatest thing since life spread and nobody could get enough. And mm-hmm. then I remember, you know, seeing a couple of Grammys that left me like, what? Who? What? Mm-hmm. You gave an award for that? You, got, you can't be serious. <laughs> and then I remember one where, um, who the heck was up for, uh, he's a, kind of a comedian, uh, comedian rapper. Um, well, I'll let you, how about with this, um, I'll let you think about who that was. We're going to take a small yeah. little break, okay? There you go. Yeah, we'll and it. before we do, <laughs> um, you were talking earlier about Devil on Sunday, and I had that song queued up, so tell us more about that song. That song, again, is my interpretation, one interpretation of mine, of the Swampy Blues, uh, the thumb-style kind of bass idea. Um, the bass guitar in it is very, very simple because it needed to be. I like uh, slapping the bass and making some really great grooves, but i got to tell you, 
the song didn't need that, so it got its it got a simple treatment on that. Uh, the lyrics I tried to keep them in the spirit of the Crossroads story, uh, you know, the devil and uh, versus the good, you know, and mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. that kind of idea. And uh, I'm like, well, one thing you know, the devil's not going to show his face in church on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> kind of took that stupid little novel idea and ran with the ball and uh um i mean it's it's basically just your simple three piece arrangement where you have you know guitar bass and drums and uh went for a real simple solo uh didn't tried very hard not to overplay resisted the uh the urge to want to you know burn a lick and show off cuz it's like that's not going to get you gold. You want to you want to focus on something uh, pure from your heart. Forget the technique. Forget showing off. Just just play. And okay. that's what I went for. All right. So we're going to take a small break, and we'll be right, right back with Devil on Sunday by Johnny Searfoss. Don't go away. Let's talk about the music as wanting your sponsorship to help support local independent music and musicians worldwide. We have different levels of sponsorship for everyone, including up-and-coming bands and musicians, to give a little more boost to your promotions. Let's Talk About the Music is also looking to podcast live from your music-related special events, shows, and venues. For more information, go to letstalkaboutthemusic.com. Let's Talk About the Music, the controversial talk show with a global mix of music, has been on air for six months now. It was a bit of a rough start, but after 20 episodes, we think we've got it and wanted to say thank you. We will be flashbacking through our last 20 episodes and asking past musical guests and listeners to send us questions and feedback. And again, thank you for joining in from everyone here at Let's Talk About the Music. Well, that was some boring music. Spike! Come on, where's the Justin Bieber? Where's the Katy Perry? Where's the Fallout Boy? Noddle, you have witch powers. Turn him into a chipmunk and feed him to the owl outside. I will do no such thing. We're here to talk about our website. HomeCanineNeutering.com What? No! InvaderPet.com where people can check out our comic strips or locate bookstores selling bookmarks with our comics on them. So, listeners, want to see comics of me, Noddle the Witch, my pets Kaylee Cat and Spike Beagle? Go to InvaderPet.com and check us out. Seriously, though, you guys really have a canine neutering website? No. 
on Sunday. Johnny Sear Foss. Sear Foss. <laughs> there you go. Yes. Stretch the word. Put it together. <laughs> I got it, Mel. Yeah. <laughs> Old, old German name out there. I should, I'm going to change it back to the. I think the original had a Z on front of it, so we'll, we'll go with it's the old. It's going to be yeah. That's the scoot. Oh, yeah. That's not going to be <laughs> making it more difficult for me. No, not at all. No. You don't love me at all, <laughs> jo- Johnny. No, you don't. <laughs> now I would like to play their blues for you, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, my God. Sorry. <laughs> So Eminem and, and Steely Dan were up for, for, like, a lot of the same kind of things. And I just remember spitting at the TV thinking, how could, why would you even put them in the same category? That's bizarre and, <laughs> and just wrong. Like, that shouldn't happen. And, uh, of course, uh, Steely being the ultimate studio band, they uh, they just walked away with, like, you know, half of the awards. And uh, I was delighted and happy to see that. But, uh, yeah. Changing times, and I just I'm I'm sad for the dumbing down of America. Um, if you don't believe that, just look at uh, look who's left on the uh, roster here. We we got the clueless lady and the guy who's going to make America great again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, and I hate yeah. politics, so I won't go any deeper than that. But um, if, if that's the best we can do on the high end, imagine some of the citizens who actually got them where they are. Yeah. <laughs> <You> gotta, <laughs> oh boy, we're in trouble. We're, we're definitely in trouble, folks. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but I could care less what the Kardashians had for dinner and when it came out the backside of them. Uh, that's, uh, or what their backside less. looks like in a magazine. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> once you once you inject about fifty pounds of Dow chemical in it, you know. That's right. <laughs> right, That's right. right. <laughs> Big ass blues right here. I'm gonna write it tonight, folks. Hey see? Stay tuned, you won't want to miss it. <laughs> you gotta have that'll be a classic along with Fat Bottom Girls. Absolutely. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Bottom girls. Well now now that raises the bar though. You know, trying to compete with that song, that that raises the bar. <laughs> Well, I think the subject matter will be a little bit different between the two of them. One's a little bit more endearing than the other. The other one's a little bit more clinical. I'm sure you won't hear. I'm sure either way you won't hear about the bitches and hoes. <laughs> or turn in another kind of stuff. I love this thing. This is a little. Uh, <laughs> it's a little cannon gun thing uh, from the Spickable Me franchise. And uh, one of my, uh, actually, the guy that was in the band with Joe and I when we were had an acoustic band, um, he was the best man at my wedding. He bought me this thing because he always buys me gag gifts, and uh, I, I'm actually finding it a lot of fun. <laughs> I'm getting, uh, I'm starting to get trigger finger from pulling the button so often. Hey, that's great. Now you don't have to pull fingers anymore. You can just pull the button. You get the same Perfect. result, right? Pull my finger. Ah, <laughs> oh, don't do that. I, I already have a button to do that. Anyway, <laughs> see, I got paid for that now. I don't got to do it. <laughs> um, so I have I have a tremendous crew that comes in and helps me out. Um, on the first album, I had people like uh, Nikki Lauro on drums, and of course Joe doing his uh, harmonic and vocals, and a guy by the name of Matt Magasco on keyboards, um, who's just insane player. Uh, been around a long time, and he's got a few years on me. And then Carolyn Falzone on on vocals. Now, uh, I think most of those people appeared on the second album, but then, like I was saying, I got I got the great uh, gift of being. Able-